Welcome to CSCI 100 Lecture 4. Today we're going to keep uh, learning more building blocks that we can use to write our programs. Um, and we're going to learn specifically about data types and about operators. So to set the stage for data types, I want to introduce a new concept, uh, this concept of abstraction. So abstraction is the quality of thinking uh, with ideas instead of concrete details. So you can think about, uh, for example, driving a car. What do you know about uh, cars? Some of you might be very knowledgeable about cars, but um, for the most part, what we as drivers know about cars is that there's a gas pedal, there's a brake pedal, and there's a steering wheel. And with those three things, we know that we want to go faster, you press the gas pedal. You want to go slower, you press the brake. Um, under the hood, there's a lot of stuff happening in the car. There's an engine, um, there's gas being burnt to, uh, com combusted to move the car, um, all sorts of stuff going on that I definitely can't tell you about. Uh, but that's part, part of the point is I'm a driver, but I don't know anything about what's going on inside of the car, the actual mechanism. And that's an example of abstraction. So we can work with the idea of just go forward, slow down, or turn, um, instead of having to think about how every part inside of the car interacts. And you'll notice this is useful not only for you to be able to drive your car, but because all car manufacturers agree on the same abstraction of the car, so all of the cars have a gas pedal, a brake pedal, and a steering wheel, you're able to rent a car or borrow your friend's car and still be able to drive it without having to learn um, how to drive a brand new car, even though it has a totally different mechanism inside and more different parts, the layer of abstraction is the same. For us, that means that uh, we can think on a level higher than just the bits and bytes that the computer thinks in. And so instead of having to write out in binary each time that we want um, some number, uh, we could just write the number 5. We don't have to write 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Just like the car example, uh, to abstract away how the computer is storing things, we use different data types in our program. And the compiler is going to treat those different data types differently. And we saw an example like this last class. But on line 1, we have these two numbers, 9 and 7. And when we add them together, we get 16 when A gets printed. Um, but in line 3, where we're uh, assigning a value to the variable B, we have the string 9 and the string 7 being added together. And so when we two, put two strings together, we get a new string, 9, 7. Not the number 97, but the string, 9, 7. So Python has 13 built-in types. But for the most part, you use these 9. Um, Booleans, integers, floats, strings. Also lists, tuples, and ranges. Um, and then dictionaries and sets. And today we're going to learn about the first four, and we're going to focus on them for the next couple of weeks. But uh, later in September, in about three, four weeks, we're going to learn about lists, tuples, and ranges. And then towards the end of the semester, we'll talk about dictionaries and sets. So let's start with our first new data type, which is a Boolean. Uh, a Boolean you can, uh, uh, is a type that can only have two possible values, so true or false, which, by the way, should sound kind of familiar to you. It sounds very similar to binary, right, where each bit can only be 0 or 1. Uh, these Booleans you can think of fitting very well for uh, is types of questions, like, is it true that the state of my program is x? And so an example here is, is it true that the bison is wearing a hat? So on the left, bison isn't wearing a hat, so is wearing hat equals false. And on the right, this bison is wearing a Howard hat, and so is wearing hat is equal to true. Um, now notice that for Python, the true and the false values uh, have to be capitalized. So true and false are the special keywords here that specifically are the only two values that a Boolean can be, um, and they have to be capitalized. 
Okay. Now, how do we use this? We now have a, a, a Boolean data type that can be either true or false. How do we use it to do something useful? For that, we're going to take a quick detour and talk about a concept called an operator. Um, in Python, and in general in programming languages, operators are special symbols that can be used to perform operations on values or variables. So operators perform operations. Some of the different kinds, you don't need to remember this list or know which operators are of what kind, but it's just to point out that um, operators do all sorts of things. So they can be used for Boolean logic, like we'll see in a minute. Um, also, the regular arithmetic operators that you're used to are also present in Python. There are comparison operators, string operators. Uh, but it's important to know that the same operator uh, will do different things in different contexts. And so if you apply a certain operator to strings, it might do something different than what it would do for numbers. As we saw earlier um, in the example, adding two integers together is different than adding two strings together. So on to our first new operator. Um, the, the, we have three Boolean operators. The first one here is not. And not given a Boolean, um, will flip that Boolean from one value that it has to the opposite value. So logically, this maps to something like um, an inverse relationship between two Booleans. So if you're not in class, then you are absent. So for a statement like this, when it's evaluated, if is in class is true, then is absent is set to not true, which is false. So is absent gets set to false if the uh, student is not in class. Um, the second operator is AND, which evaluates to true if both sides of the expression are true. And so kind of in regular life, can you buy beer? Well, you can buy beer if you have funds and you have an adult ID. So if you either don't have funds or you don't have an adult ID or neither, then this evaluates to false. But if you both have funds and have an adult ID, then this evaluates to true. And finally, we have the OR uh, operator. And OR evaluates to true if either side of the expression is true, um, or both sides. And so how do you have an adult ID? Well, either you're over 21, or you have a fake ID. And then, uh, or both, so true and false, or false and true, or true and true, all of uh, all, uh, 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 have a value uh, of, of true in an OR statement, only false and false will evaluate to, to false for an OR uh, operator. By the way, why are these called uh, Booleans? Uh, it's kind of a weird name. Actually, it comes from George Boole, this guy here on the left, who was a British scientist, and he came up with the idea of doing uh, algebra using logic. So before we had thought about algebra as just for numbers, but it turns out if you do algebra with just the value true and false, you can do very interesting things. And he's kind of credited for the bringing about the information age and the um, computers. And yes, you'll notice how similar binary is to these bools. That's no accident. 